All right, we're back here with Mark Blackburn here, uh, Greystone Golf and Country Club, which I'm pumped to have him here. Been five years, amazing. He's been here five years. You got a million downloaders, so I'm here. Yeah, now you're no, no. I'm in five years of you being at Greystone. Oh yeah, no, it's fantastic. Yeah, you were a huge uh, part of me getting here, so it's been awesome. Love it. It's a fantastic place. You ever get the chance to come to Greystone, you should. Blackburngolf.com. Yeah. We'll take care of you. And when are we ever going to do a workshop? We did one. When are we ever going to do one? You have to. You know, I has to be me. Well, you're the one with a busy schedule. You're the celebrity. You got a check. Oh, you have a blue check by your name on social media. I don't have one of those. I'm under the radar. Have you asked for one? You don't ask for those. They just give them to you. Know, you you got to apply for them. I mean, mine was. You're given. a PhD. Mine was given, but I, you, everyone else has to ask for them. Oh, everyone else has to ask for them. <laughs> All right, listen. Here on the Insiders Club, you you work with the best of the best players, and you also work with unbelievable amateurs across the country. What are the if you were to say? the average person wants to take their game out there and go play better. Yep. Okay. They go out and they're a 12 handicap and they've got a big event coming up like we have here. We've got our member guests coming up. Yeah, this your week. favorite tournament of the year. 100%. I'll play with my father-in-law. I mean, how much fun is this? I'll probably call you on Friday and ask you to help me again. But what are the three things that you say that a player should do if they want to improve? Like, you know, is it is it get better at the short putt? What is it? Give me some insight. So, Number one, there's no substitute for like time invested. Okay, so most people have this expectation that they're gonna come out after work and spend 25 minutes on the driving range and that they're gonna play well on the golf course. Mm -hmm. So number one is, do you- Actually you, practice? Time. Time. Okay, okay. You, there needs to be time. Now we can streamline it, you can make it efficient, but it's a time. But number one is go on the golf course, if you can, Go out on the golf course, take a couple of balls, chip, putt, spend most of your time, depending on the handicap level you are, I'd spend it, if you're a club golfer, spend it 50 yards and in. Because you're gonna miss lots of greens. You're gonna have a lot of those shots because generally speaking, your ball strike is probably not particularly good. And you need to be comfortable that that's your best place to hack a score. As in hack, as in get better, right? We use yeah, hack negatively, yeah. but like, I'm talking like, create a gain you know it's interesting i took a i took a young lady out on the golf course and she wanted to play better for her high school team and she came from another instructor we got and we play 18 holes and she kept telling me about all the work she's been doing on her driver and her long game and i said has your play is your coach ever taken you out on the course from 50 yards and in because i said by the way yes you have a big slice yes you get, but it took you seven to get down around the green yeah and she's like no i never have and I was like, I couldn't, I felt bad. I actually felt bad because I, watching her play, the slice was big, don't get me wrong, it hit left trees to go to the right trees. However, around the green, she didn't have a clue. And in her mind, and in the instructor's mind, it was like, hey, just fix this problem, the rest of your game will improve. Yeah, no, I mean, it's-, it's Unbelievable. Golf's a game to be played, right? Yeah. So it's all about scoring. So you have to, there's an art. The artistic part of golf is learning how to build a score, how to, how to, take it to the house, how to post it. Well, you have to understand that that requires different skill sets. The short game is the ultimate trump card. It's like, it can make up for deficits in other areas. Most people just don't practice it enough. You have to be on the greens. The best green readers are generally the best putters because they spend a lot of time putting it. They, they're not generally the best ball strikers. That's because their time is spent on the greens. But if you're trying to improve, number one, you have to go on the golf course and play. Like our company that we use to coach kids PDEV is all about on the golf course, hitting golf shots, playing golf, like player development of playing the game. The game is not on the driving range or in a teaching center making pretty golf swings. The best players have got some of the ugliest swings, but they know how to get the ball in the hole. So number one, practice is on 50 yards. Number two, if you have to get better and you have to play, I would try and master one shot. I would not try and be a master. Like if you hit a draw, hit a draw. If you hit a hundred percent, yeah. So I find that that that's been this unbelievable misunderstanding of players that they have to hit the ball left to right, right to left. So I've coached players who are one-dimensional, and they've got over twenty-five million dollars in earnings on the PGA Tour. So obviously they're doing something right. They know how to score. People see Tiger Woods, and Tiger Woods can hit it both ways, and he's a complete phenom amazing but not everybody has to do that you it's like 
going to restaurants. You go to Italian restaurant, different ingredients to a Asian restaurant. Doesn't mean that one's better than the other, but you've got to do different things. Well, everybody who tries to be this big skill set of shots, that's okay if your skill level is at such a point. But I would say master one shot shape, like understand how to make the ball do one thing. So you can't eliminate one side of the golf course, but you can have a tendency to where your golf ball is gonna be pretty predictable. Like, okay, I know that I can do this. Now, good players tend to see golf courses with a certain lens. If you draw the ball, you tend to be a guy of your right-hander that sees up on the left side of the tee box and plays down the right side of the fairway, and vice versa if you're a fader. That changes your perspective on how you see a golf course. But you can't do that if your golf ball's going all over the place. Even if you've got a slice, you might as well slice it every single time. At least you know that's going to happen. So I would say, you've, you know, the second thing is to find a predictable flight. The same trajectory, the same shape. If you can do that, now all of a sudden you've, you've got something that's f fairly consistent like in terms of, all right, this is my plan, this is what I'm trying to do. So uh, 50 yards and in, so pitching, chipping, putting, you're going to work on one predictable shot shape and then I think the next piece for people is if they really want to play well is they have to figure a way, they've got a shot shape, but you've got to figure a shot that you can put in play. Whether it's when a three word, pressure, whether yeah. it's a hybrid, like a, a shot that you can put in play. Like the drive is great, but if you hit one out of 12 and it, 14 failures, but let's say you hit one out of 12 that might be playable two or out of bounds, well, that's pointless. So you have to have a shot that's playable. And most people are always trying to hit it as far as possible. I agree with that wholeheartedly, but distance is only any good if it's inside the tree line. Like, so you have to find something that you can put in play. What do you, when, when a person calls and has a relationship with their coach, what would you tell them on how to get the most out of their coaching? Because you coach coaches a lot. You spend a lot of time working with coaches and developing their skill sets. How would you tell them to go about that interaction so You have as to ask better questions to the student. The, to, the player, does, the coach does. Yes. But as a player, how do they? What should they do when they go to their coach? I mean, you, you said it in the regular podcast: is don't assume that they're going to fix it. Yeah. No. I mean, you have to realize that good coaches are going to are going to lead you. Sometimes you're told, but you're trying to suggest and lead because it has to be the player's idea. Like you go to a coach, a good coach, who might charge you a lot of money that has a great resume. You assume that they're going to be right so you don't question it well i always think that questions are really good that tells me you've assimilated some information or you're actually listening it shouldn't just be do 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 there needs to be some interaction because learning happens when you question and you're involved in the learning process so as a student my thing is and i encourage people to do it ahead of time i give them questions um or i tell what would you like to work on when for this next lesson what have you been doing so i think journaling we talk about this all the time is massive as a player you need to be looking at what do you do well? Where are you struggling? And then you need to go with that. Hey, look, I'm working on this. This is what we were talking about. This is really good. I'm struggling with this. Like you have to go in there like contributing something to it. It's not a dictatorship or that it just doesn't work that way. With the best players, they always have an opinion. Now they're generally the little subjective. They're not always right, but they're gonna give you feedback. And I would say that the average golfer needs to go to find an instructor first off that can help you play golf. Golf swing is just one attribute of it. A good coach can give you, show you how to swing it, but yeah. someone that can teach you how to play the game and score, but then you need to go in there with, I'm struggling with this and this, how do I do this better? And I think that's the way the student can get better. A teacher needs to ask better questions, but the student needs to come prepared. If you're not prepared and you're just showing up, like you don't just go to the doctor to go to the doctor. Generally, you go to the doctor. You might your annual physical, but you go to the doctor because you have a problem and you're willing to be like, again, vulnerable about that, I think that's what you have to do with your instructor. And don't just assume the instructor's going to know. Whilst we're pretty good and we feel like we can read people pretty good, we don't know, we're not all knowing and we make mistakes and we're only human at the end of the day. But if you wanna get better, you gotta ask, you've gotta, you have to be present and involved in the process, as in you have to contribute if you're the student. If you don't and you're just expecting it to be do this, do that, then that's really tough because then you're not really assimilating the information and you're not listening. And then you're never going to apply it. You're never going to have any ownership of it. Make sure you check out BlackburnGolf.com, all his social media handles, um, to learn great information out there about how to make it easy, how to get players better, and also insights from when you're out on tour and things like that. So uh, we're, we've got to head to New Orleans right now. 
to go to the Zurich Classic. So yeah, let's go do this.